For today's shoot, we are going to be playing around with a lot of creative techniques. Everything from use of gels, creative filters, shutter drag, and all of it shot on a studio blue background. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. It's funny because when I post images on social media, I ask people, how extra do you want to be? Like how much creativity do you want to throw at one photograph? Sometimes it's creative hair and makeup. Sometimes it's going to be use of color or gels or filters or all of it. And that's what we're doing in this instance. I am just throwing a lot of creative techniques at one shot. Now, here's the thing. With fashion photography, it's always important to start with intention. What are you trying to achieve with a shot? But it's not wrong to experiment and evolve. So I've actually tested out this shot before filming and what I was analyzing is what could I do to show off this piece of wardrobe? So that like that really amazing coat, what could I do? And, and I was playing around thinking, all right, let's contrast it with a Savage Universal studio blue background. So we started with that playing around with a little color theory, a warm, cool contrast, super saturated colors. But the jacket, it, it just, it wasn't looking, it wasn't looking as sparkling or glowing as it looks to my camera. So then I decided what could I do to maybe backlight it, have it glow from behind. And as soon as I did that, it almost looked like wings and started to take on this surreal nature. And from there, I wanted to try to bring even more color into the frame. And so I started to add gels to the shadows and gels as rim lights. And so where we ended up is a photograph with creative gels, creative filters, and shutter drag, and of course, a whole lot of color. So what I want to do is I want to break down each piece of this equation and show you how I ended up with a formula at the end that gave me a ton of flexibility to just experiment and create something really cool. So I'm going to turn off the lights and I'm going to build them in one by one. So we're actually going to start with the light over here to the right hand side, which is a large umbrella with diffusion. So a soft light source with a blue gel. And this is what will light the entire scene. So let me turn off my other two lights. All right. All right, so with our first light, which by the way is a Pro Photo D2, we basically have a kiss of blue light across the entire frame, which works quite well because it's on a blue background. So we're going to have a blue background, but then also blue on the subject's face, so it'll unify her with the background. So that's light number one. And then I was saying how I was, I was experimenting and trying to figure out what I could do to show off that, that jacket. And so what we've done is we've backlit her from behind by using a Pro Photo D2 on a floor stand, bare bulb. So the idea is we're just kicking light back towards the camera, illuminating the jacket from behind. So I'm gonna turn on that second light and show you what, the, what we're working with so far. Okay. Okay, so that is instantly a million times better photograph. It's far more interesting. Now, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the frame, I actually do see a little bit of the cord running to that backlight. Well, if I didn't want this, I could switch over to a Profoto B1 or a B10 or a B10X, something that is battery operated. But honestly, it'll take me two seconds to remove, so I'm going to leave it there. But if you're really fixated and you wanna pay attention to what you capture in camera, just switch it out for something that is battery operated if you have that available. All right, so I like this so far. And honestly, I could shoot this as is. It looks cool, it looks funky, futuristic. But as I move the subject around, I noticed there were times when a little bit of the light from behind would peek through and flare out at the camera. And as soon as I saw these flares, I knew that this was a perfect opportunity for creative filters. And so I'm going to add Black Pro Mist. Black Pro Mist filters, what it does is it, it takes any bright highlights and it glows them, it blooms them. It gives them this, this beautiful hazy effect. And so I know at the edges of the frame or the edges of the highlights on that jacket, it'll give me this pretty glow inhalation. So it's on my to-do list to buy some more of these. So right now I'm actually stacking up a quarter and an eighth of the Black Pro Mist. I'm going to buy some heavier ones soon, but it'll be totally fine just to stack these two on. So let's see what it does to those highlights. So if you pay attention to the highlights on her jacket there, you can see that they're glowing a little bit. This will be even more exaggerated if I actually see the strobe through the piece later on. It'll just give me this big glowing highlight. So that's two lights, filters. Let's add on our third light. 
And so the third light I have over on the left hand side of the scene is a one by four foot strip softbox, but in it I placed a green gel. And the reason I did this is I felt like when the blue gel hit her yellow jacket, it started to look a little green. And so to unify her with the background, I had the blue gel, but to unify her maybe with the jacket, I'd add a green gel. So I'd start bringing all the colors together, playing around with color theory. So let's see what that gel is adding to the equation. Great. Okay, so you can see a really pretty green rim light to the left-hand side of the frame. Typically green is not something that I would use for gels, but in this instance, since I'm you know, guided by purpose and intention, what's going on in the frame, it makes sense. So we've got our gels, multiple gels. We've got our backlight. We've got our black promise filters. And so the next piece of the equation is going to be shutter drag. Now, by the way, I could shoot this image without it, but shutter drag is when you use a slower shutter speed. So right now I'm at one two hundredth of a second. And what that's intended for is to cut out ambient light. So any of the light in the scene, the modeling lights, they're not going to register because I'm shooting at one two hundredth of a second. However, when I go to a lower shutter speed, maybe down to a 20th of a second, a 10th of a second, an eighth of a second, that long shutter speed allows some of that ambient light to register. Now it will change the color in the scene a little bit, but more importantly, if my subject moves, or if I zoom my lens or I move my camera, it'll start to create streaks and blurs that I can use for creative purposes. Now, if shutter drag is new to you, I recommend you check out some of the links in the description below to my other videos that go through shutter drag more in depth. I walk you through this step-by-step. Step, so if it's a concept that's totally new to you, you'll be able to see it as I build. So I'm at one 200th of a second. Instead, let me show you what happens if I go to a 10th of a second. I'm going to take a photo and move my camera. All right, so what I did for this frame is when I clicked the camera, I actually zoomed in. And you can see that there's like streaks of light coming from her jacket. But any movement will register. So if I wiggle side to side, up and down, zoom in and out, maybe if she's moving around, all of these things will create different results. To bring that all together so far, gels, shutter drag, creative filters, and then it's putting it all together in the shoe. So getting the right pose and the expression and the composition and all of that but I just gave myself a ton of inspiration and then it's about bringing it all together in the final shot. And of course, my inspiration in the beginning started with that beautiful translucent jacket. And then I started to experiment and put little things together that made sense. But just because it makes sense doesn't mean that it can't be extremely creative. So with that, uh, I'm going to experiment and have fun. And doing so, by the way, I'm going to be shooting with the Canon R5 and the 24 to 105, which is my go-to lens and camera setup. The reason the 24 to 105 is going to be really important is the shutter drag, the zooming and the, the moving. A fixed focal length prime, it's doable, but you're going to have to move the camera a lot more. Whereas with a zoom lens, I can zoom to get some of that creative effect. So I've got all the ingredients in place. So now let's get this shot. So can I start with your face to your right? Perfect. So what do you think of this creativity? There's a lot going on, but I love it. It's super experimental, really unexpected. And it looks like the work I shoot often, but different. I think it's an evolution, which is what I love. And I really think that in this case, shooting against a saturated background, in this case, Savage Universal Studio Blue, along with the bright color on the clothing, along with the gels, like each one of these things plays a role to make impact in the end. Now, if you wanna see the gear used in the making of these images, be sure to check out the links in the description below and definitely check out Savage Universal Studio Blue. I have so many more of these videos already up on my YouTube channel and of course, many more coming your way. So be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time, guys.